Hi, and welcome to Bible Study with Friends, where our goal is to show and grow a passion for studying God's Word. I'm here with my friends, Julie and Grant Mangrum, and we're continuing our series in 2 Timothy. And today, we're going to be looking at 2 Timothy chapter 3. And this is very interesting, because we're going to be talking about future trials from past examples to current actions. And it's really going to be an interesting uh, chapter. We're going to go from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, all the way down to verse 17. We hope uh, to cover this whole chapter today in this idea of almost a promise of future trials with past examples and therefore a call to present action. And we'll okay. do that when we come right back. Hi, and welcome back to Bible Study with Friends. As I said, I'm here with my friends, Julie and Grant Mangrum. How are you doing, guys? Hello. We are doing good. I'm excited about getting into the third chapter of four. We're almost done with uh, our series in 2 Timothy. And it's this is a great series. We saw these chapter by chapter, these appeals to young Timothy from Paul. And remember... This is Paul's last will and testament. This is the last letter he writes. And this really shows what's on his mind as he's trying to minister to his good friend. And I don't know what you call him, mentee? What? When, you, when you're mentoring <laughs> yeah. someone, and is that <laughs> your... Anyway, he is his protege, yeah. a young Timothy, who's the pastor of a big church. And he's really speaking his heart into young Timothy. And today, let's get into the scripture right away. We're going to start in verse 1 down to about verse 9. We see an explanation of the future. So the first thing we see from verse 1 down to verse about verse 9 is an explanation of the future. And Julie, go ahead and read from verse 1 down to verse 4. But realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Then, then they hold... To a form of godliness, although they deny its power, avoid such men as these. Now, this is an indication of something that's written to Timothy about the future. Don't be shocked when you have a hard time in the future, because this is who's coming. Men will be, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, today, we could look at this list of verse 2, 3, 4, and 5, and really see this really relates to us today in the latter times of 2,000 years since the church was started. And this is really an indication, if you don't just read that list real quick, just to get it over with, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, you really start to see this describes many non-believers of today. Lovers of self, it's all about me. Lovers of money, it's all about the pursuit of wealth. Boastful, arrogant, revilers, and that's people that make fun of spiritual matters. Disobedient to parents, disrespectful to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable. In other words, I'm mad and you can't say anything to keep me from being mad. Malicious gossips. Boy, I just go on social media today. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. With, without self-control. One of the reasons why dieting is so big, because people do not have self-control to stop eating too much or stop indulging too much. So they're without self-control. 
they're brutal. Talk about how we relate to other races. Many people relate to other races in a brutal way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just the way things are in our society today. And haters of good, if you're trying to do good, you're going to get ridiculed. You're going to get haters. Okay. There's a Bible study with friends. We're just in the word of God saying, this is how to study the Bible. This is what God's word says. And we have our haters, haters of good, treacherous. They're reckless in that they're acting in a way that nobody's going to hold me to account. Conceited lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. It's all about what I want when I want it. And I don't want God to get in the way of me feeling good. That's why taking drugs and that sort of thing. It's all about, I want to be feeling good. Lovers of self. And then this last one is interesting. Holding to a form of godliness, although they have denied its power. In other words, there's a lot of people out there who say, I'm a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. You ever heard that? <laughs> yeah. Or even, I'm a Christian. I just yeah. don't let my Christianity get in the way of the way I live my life. <laughs> okay. You go, wow. They hold to a form of godliness. They might even be religious with another religion that's not true godliness. It's just trying to earn their way to heaven. Yeah. And they deny the that. power. And then it says, and then the warning is for Timothy and for us today to avoid people like this. Just avoid them. And this is where we don't hang out with non-Christians. We spend time with non-Christians with the agenda of sharing Christ with them. But we don't hang out with them in order to socialize and to have a good time because they got a completely different agenda to having a good time than we have. That's true. And so the instructions to Timothy and to us, the readers, is of avoid people like this. And it says, because from among them, Mm -hmm. Are those who enter into households and take captive weak women, weighed down with sins, led on by various impulses. In other words, they prey on the, the weak. They prey on people who are struggling with guilt or with sin, and, and they don't know how to handle it. These people come in and say, oh, I, I got your solution. All you got to do is send me your money a lot of times. And then it starts talking about lessons from the past that are lessons of the future. And he says, uh, these people, and this is great, in verse 7, it says, these people, they come across like they're, they're learned people. They're always learning. They're, they have their doctorates. They have their masters. They have all this stuff. They're always learning, but they're never coming to the true knowledge of the Lord, to true knowledge. And in 1 Corinthians, it talks about true knowledge is folly to man. It's foolishness. Mm -hmm. And these people that say, I got a couple degrees in whatever, so I'm a spiritual person and I want to teach you. And he's taking advantage of people that are seeking, people that have needs. And we have to be very careful about that. Is this making sense? Now, he's using this idea of staying away from these people. And he's going to use some examples from the past. He says in verse 8, just as Janus and Jambres opposed Moses, so these men, who are men around today, but men that he's saying these men are going to pop up and are going to cause trials, suffering for you. And for us, and Janus and Jambres. Now, in these are Egyptian priests. And if you go to this yeah. little letter A right there, and you go over to verse 8, they're mentioned in Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. But these are the Egyptian priests who opposed. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then they're mentioned yeah. again down in verse 9. Uh, and in verse 9, it's this goes mm -hmm. back to Exodus 7. 11 and 12, 
and Exodus 8, 18, and Exodus 9, 11. These are where the Egyptian priests are coming after Moses and opposing him based upon their religion and their religiosity. How's that for we're religiosity? So these are examples from the past. And then verse 11, these are examples from the past that start to affect us now. And he says, now you followed, this is past, you followed my teaching, conduct, my, my purpose, my faith, my patience, my love, my perseverance, my persecutions uh, and sufferings. You followed those in the past. Such as happened to me at Antioch and at Iconium and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them, all these persecutions, the Lord rescued me. Now, based upon that past experience, he's, he's going to make uh, some comments about us today and about Timothy. Now, he says in verse 12, this is key. He says, you saw what I did in the past. And how the Lord helped me persevere. Then he says in verse 12, Indeed, anybody who desires to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. That's a strong statement about the future based upon his experience of the past and Timothy's observation of Paul in the past. Are you tracking with what Paul's saying here? And he's saying anybody who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. We are going to suffer. And I got two verses here. Let's look. He doesn't say that all who desire to live a godly life might be persecuted. He doesn't say that. He says anybody who wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. And I want you to look at 1 Thessalonians Chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. So that no one would be disturbed by these afflictions, for you yourselves know that we have been destined for this. For indeed, when we were with you, we kept telling you in advance that we were going to suffer affliction. He says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 that Christians are destined to suffer for the gospel. So we should not be shocked if people are giving us a hard time or our job is given us our, whatever it is. Though when it talks about in verse one, when the hard times come and we're suffering, we shouldn't be shocked. I want you to flip over to 2 Corinthians chapter one, verse five. I got it. Okay. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. Now that's great because it's talked about abundant comfort. But do you see what it says? It says the sufferings of Christ are ours, Christians, in abundance. We are going to suffer. And then you come back to this and it says, indeed, anybody who desires to lead a godly life in Christ Jesus, who's a Christian, will be persecuted. We are going to suffer for the faith. And that's throughout history. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about now present actions based upon that. And he goes in verse 14. We're going to do this very quickly. You, however, present action, continue in the things you have learned and things you have become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. And that's that back where you saw me suffer for the faith. You saw me go through persecution and continue in what I taught you because I taught you in the midst of suffering for the faith. And it says, continue in verse 15, it says, and that from childhood, you have known the sacred writings. Now, remember, he yeah. was brought up and witnessed to by mother, his mother and his grandmother. So Paul's just reminded him, remember the way you grew up, you grew up respecting the scriptures, the sacred writings. Now, then it was just the Old Testament, but as more and more the New Testament is written, Paul talks constantly about sound doctrine that I have taught you, that you have learned from me. And he says, the sacred writings, which are able to give you the wisdom that leads to salvation through 
faith which is in Christ Jesus. So he's talking about Christian doctrine of how you've learned from the scriptures that you can accept Christ as your Savior and Lord and be saved. And then he goes into a famous digression. Read verse 16 and 17. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So for your present actions, if you want to be equipped for every good work and you want to be adequate for the job, then you be in the word. And he doesn't just say in the sacred writings of the Old Testament. He says all scripture is inspired by God and all scripture that is inspired by God and Old Testament and New Testament is profitable. It's useful for teaching, for reproof, that is correction. Reproving is kind of saying, I'm going to slap you on the hand, and then I'm going to correct your action. Correct, uh, a reproof is what you're doing is not right based upon what we've been teaching you. So I'm going to do a little discipline, and then I'm going to correct you. This is the correct way. And that's what scripture is used for. And then it says, to equip you now to be ready for every good work. So the future telling is you're going to suffer for the faith. And you need to to watch out for men who are going to come across as you know self-important and all these hateful things, brutal things. And it's, they're going to be because of your faith. But based upon the past, the distant past, like the Egyptian priests that gave Moses a hard time, but also the past that you saw in Paul's ministry where he was suffering for the faith, but he kept on persevering uh, in Christ Jesus. And he says, based upon that past, currently be in the word, currently be continuing in the word as I taught you. Because the word is what you need to be equipped for every good work. So that that really takes us to the end of chapter 3, where Paul is really communicating this idea of no matter what happens in the future, you I've warned you about it. Stay in the word, because as you saw in me, and you saw in the way in the distant past, Old Testament and New Testament, Stick with the word of God, and it'll get you through. You'll be prepared for every good work, even in the midst of suffering. Any reactions, any comments to this chapter? You see anything new or anything that really spoke to you? Yeah, always the first seven verses usually jump out at me about people in the last days and stuff. So that's kind of what I thought about initially, but then just the points about suffering in the past and Paul's sufferings and what that should lead us to do now. That definitely helps me to see it in a different light. You guys are really obeying Paul in that you guys have determined to be serious Bible students and teach people. So you're serious in the word so that you will be teaching the next generation. Yeah. So it really speaks to you and speaks to me. It speaks to Absolutely. all believers who want to be serious about their faith. People are going to give you a hard time because people who are not Christians are, they got issues, right? <laughs> that list mm -hmm. is an awful list. And if you slow down and you look at each of those lists, you go, wow, I know people like this. And this really reflects our current society. Yes, 100%. Our social media, our per interpersonal reactions, the, the way that our bosses come at us, the way non-Christians come at us, the way non-Christian friends and even family can come at us. Yep. And what an encouragement for us. And I hope this has been an encouragement for you guys on YouTube. And I hope it's been a blessing. If it has been, hit the subscribe button and the like button and if you get a chance to go to our website, I'm going to list it right down below. And the website basically says what we do and why we do it and how you can become involved. And I really want you to encourage you to go to the video 
menu and look at all of the playlists. We have over almost 300 videos available wow. in various Bible studies and various teaching that you hit on any of those on the website. It'll take you right to YouTube and you can watch the videos. And we hope that you continue to do that. We're going to finish up in chapter four next week. So until then, God bless you.